This week, Chris Peterson, as chair of the elders, sent an email to the elders on Tuesday telling them that I had called him that I was going home and that I was happy to get out of the hospital and be going home. And also that the, doc the doctor had cleared me to preach this Sunday as long as it was short. Somebody emailed Chris back and they said, praise God, keep praying, don't stop. Now, I don't know if that's because I was going home or because I was going to preach short. We'll try to do both. Students, when you cross the Jordan to go in to occupy the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and when you occupy it and live in it, you must diligently observe all the statutes and ordinances that I am setting before you today. Well, there's no question but what you are being set into another land, a graduation, a passage. And it may be a difficult time to graduate because it truly is a time that is marked by uncertainties. But our whole history as humans is a time of uncertainties. And like previous generations, you will be able to do just well with the background that you have been provided and be able to look back. There's a wonderful story about the Eskimos of Canada, northern tundra, and we saw that while we were on vacation in Alaska as well a couple of years ago. When they travel by foot across great expanses of land, they mark their way by erecting six-foot-tall piles of stone. And as they walk along and they look back and the previous pile of stone begins to get out of sight, they build another one so that they can always look where they are and they won't get lost because they can look and see where they have come from. And they can always find their way home, no matter how far out they get. As a person graduates, it's time for looking forward, but it's also a time for looking backward. Like the Eskimos, the wise graduate will mark their way with piles of stone so that you know not only where you are, but where you came from. Our lesson today is from the uh, Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. And the children of Israel are nearing the promised land and Moses will not furnish, finish the journey with them but he is preparing them for the journey and you have been spending years preparing for the journey and what that will bring we don't know Moses is giving his students their final marching orders but there are three principles which we might all draw from Moses' instructions to his people. And it can help you graduates begin your journey into the promised land of adulthood, college, and the workplace. First of all, Moses says to the people, Remember the commandments. Actually, he's even a little bit more emphatic than that. He says, Therefore you shall keep all of the commandments which I command you this day, that you may be strong. 
keep all, not just a few, not just some, not just the ones that seem convenient, keep all the commandments. And you know that's good advice for all of us, even those of us who are not graduating. And it is to remember something that is very important. There are absolutely, absolute right and wrongs. There are things that no doubt about it are right or wrong, black or white, no gray in between. There are moral absolutes in all of our lives. And that's what Moses is saying to the people. Obey the absolutes. These are not ten suggestions, ten good ideas, ten good philosophical thoughts. They are commandments that were given to us by a loving and a just God. You see, they're commandments, but they're also statements of facts. Moses... God as well is saying, you know, if you follow what I tell you to do, if you obey these commandments, this is just the way you will live. It isn't something you will have to do. It's just the way you will live. You will not kill. You will not steal. You will not commit adultery. You will not bear false witness. You see, when God gave us the commandments, he wasn't trying to be a spoiled sport and take all of our fun out of life. If you want to, your life to amount to something, there are limits that you have to put on your own behavior. There is a moral law at work in this universe of ours and you don't break that law. You only break yourself upon it. Remember the commandments. That's number one. Number two, welcome the challenges. Life is not easy. It was never meant to be easy. God never promised us a rose garden in life with no weeds and no grass growing. He did tell us he would give us the rose garden, yes. But he also told us he would give us the tools to weed our garden and the way to fertilize it and water it and keep it growing as a beautiful garden. You see, God made us to grow spiritually strong and we go strong by welcoming and overcoming challenges. Paul Smith has a book he wrote titled God's Plan for Our Good. And he tells about a man that he knew who was born with no arms. But this handicap was offset by the fact but he was born to a very good, wise, and loving mother. He tells the story of one day when this baby was laying on the floor with no arms, and the mother was standing there watching him along with a neighbor, and he was rolling around on the floor trying to get a shirt on over his head with his feet and becoming more frustrated every moment. And the neighbor finally looked at the mother and she said, why won't you help him? And the mother looked back at her and she says, I am helping him. Today, the man lives a normal life. He dresses himself. He eats he even writes with his feet, and he is grateful to his mother for helping him by not doing for him what he needed to do by himself. By contrast, Paul Smith 
knows another mother who was just the opposite. She told her son everything she wanted him to know. He was never allowed to be on his own, to make his own mistakes, to make his own decisions about anything. Even when he was still a teenager, she laid out every article of clothing for him to get dressed on that day. She told him what to play with, how long to play with it, everything to do. At the age of 14, most of this young man's friends are eight or nine years old. He was the most helpless, immature boy the author had ever seen. You see, we are created to overcome challenges, even to welcome challenges. If you spend your life looking for the way through challenges and problems, you'll never grow strong. And sometimes you will find, in retrospect, that it was the challenges that blessed you in your life. Moses says to the people, for the land which you go to possess is not as the land of Egypt out of which you came, where you sow seed and water it with foot like a vegetable garden, but the land which you go to possess is a land of hills and valleys. Did you notice that? He informed them they were going to a land of hills and valleys. And you get that picture of the beautiful hills and the valleys. Well, maybe to some American ears, that doesn't sound so very good, because we still carry the blood of our pioneer ancestors who carved their way through this great land of ours. I remember on trips through the Flint Hills of Kansas, seeing those hills and those valleys and thinking, just think, pioneers had to come through these things and they didn't have dynamite, they didn't have road graders, they had their Conestoga wagons and it would not have been an easy thing for them to navigate the hills and valleys. So here Moses is telling them, I'm going to send you to a land of hills and valleys. Well, they thought it was good. And the reason, one of the reasons they thought it was good is for them, crossing hills and valleys was really a blessing. They'd been living in Egypt and struggling, trying to raise their crops in Egypt and weren't having much luck. But the largest hill in Israel is Mount Hermon. And it sits on the very northern border of Israel. And it traps the winter snows in that area so that when spring thaw comes, it releases the water from the spring throw, flows and thaws, and that becomes the Jordan River. And that irrigates all of Israel. And the valleys were also a blessing because they would become fertile, protected lands. As Moses said, these valleys would drink rain from heaven. Moses' words have been so true to the Israelites that Israel has become the fruit and vegetable basket for much of Europe. One day, one day, we'll look back at the hills and the valleys of our life and see what they moved us towards, that they propelled us truly to a great life. Keep the commandments. Welcome the challenges. And here's a third idea that you can use. Keep your course. Do not be detracted from serving God. Moses says to the people, Take heed to yourselves 
that your heart be not deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. In other words, young people, you will not always feel close to God. Other priorities will make your claim on life. Maybe you will slip in your commitment to God through your long, young life. Many people do. It happens in every generation. Some will never come back, and they will never know the joy of a lifetime spent walking with God. While doing a doctoral thesis, a young man spent a year with a group of Navajo Indians on a reservation in the Southwest. He lived with one family, sleeping in their hut, eating with them, working with them, living with an Indian for, as an Indian for a year. And the elder grandmother of the family didn't understand or speak any English, yet a very close relationship developed between the student and the grandmother. They seemed to share a common language a language of understanding, a language of love of one another. And over the months, the student learned a few phrases of Navajo, and the woman picked up a few words of English. And when it was time for the young man to return to the university and write his thesis, the tribe held a going away celebration for him and it was marked by sadness since he had developed a close relationship not only with the grandmother but the other members of the village. And as he prepared to get into his pickup and drive away, the old grandmother came to tell him goodbye with tears streaming down her face from her eyes. She placed her hands on the side of his face and she looked directly into his eyes and she said I like me best when I'm with you many of us have discovered that same feeling as we walk with God we bow our heads and we say Lord I like me best when I'm with you Moses gives us three stones to guide us into the future. Keep the commandments. Welcome the challenges. Keep the course. And I pray that you may always, all of you, have a productive life and walk with God. Amen.